Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I'm so excited to be able to share with you the caregiver survival tip. I am Christina Martinez, the Disney Community Engagement Executive from Humana. I work with uh, at Palm Beach, Broward, and Miami Day, supporting all agents and staff uh, who help out in the community. Cindy, should I share the screen now? Uh, yes, go ahead and share and I'll give you permission. Okay. Start to share. Or yeah, you got it. Okay, perfect. Perfect. So let's go ahead and let's just start by, uh, I don't like to know who is joining us. Uh, if you are like a professional caregivers, what type of caregivers are you? Or if you're like an informal caregiver? who are the people who take care of their of their of, of their family members either seniors children or adults with a uh, uh, disability i don't know if uh Cindy is able to monitor your comments through facebook yes. and youtube you are more than welcome to continue chatting with us and, and uh, maybe throughout and at the end of the presentation, we can help out answering those questions and, and hearing your comments um, and reading and listening to your comments, right? Right. Let's go so, ahead and start. For, for those who have responded, it looks like we have a little bit of a mix here. Um, uh -huh. And there are some caregivers with the person they care for so it's it's a little bit of a mix here okay and i don't think everybody responded so we're good okay perfect then so as i mentioned i'm the community engagement executive at humana and if you have questions today please direct them to the healthcare provider or attorney since i am not a professional uh health uh professional right this presentation has been put together by uh, advisors, clinical advisors from Humana. And we are here to share all that information in order to, uh, uh, to go through uh, challenging situations that you confront on a daily basis and to give you tips in regards of, of, of managing those. If you may please put your cell phone in silent, that will be uh, beneficial for you. But of course, because you're watching this presentation from the comfort of your home, you're more than welcome to uh, uh, make sure that you are silent. In this case, because you're watching through Facebook and, and YouTube, that, is, that will be not necessarily. Uh, you can go ahead, as I mentioned, to write down your comments or your questions at the Facebook and YouTube uh, channel. Today's agenda, in today's agenda, we will cover the basics of an informal caregiving, tape, tips for taking care of yourself and how to stay positive and some helpful resources. I asked you, how many of you were informal or, or professional caregivers? Because this presentation is mainly put together to define, to, or, or put together for informal caregivers. Nevertheless, the professional caregivers can uh, use this information to help guide the informal caregivers who they maintain uh, communication with. And also, uh, as much information that you have in your hands, it will be good. Those informal caregivers are the ones who are caring for someone else in act of love and kindness. And, it's often, and it often brings many challenges and rewards, as I mentioned, right? And the, are, those are the people who actually um, are on a daily basis, and sometimes they take care of their child, a senior, 
or an adult with disability. Keep in mind that informal caregivers may be caring for others in many different circumstances, right? They may not be equipped to carry out their caregiving responsibilities nor have they anticipated being in this situation. I will have to say that the professional caregivers are admirable because they have chosen to, to, to love and care other people that they are not necessarily know from the past. And as I mentioned, right? You sometimes we have challenges as caregivers, but most of us, because uh, we are uh, helping others, we feel rewarded. And if you don't mind sharing those challenges and 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 rewards that you have uh, experienced in the Facebook and YouTube chat box, that would be awesome. Uh, taking from my experience, my mom when she was caring, my, uh, caring for my grandmother back in, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 years ago, she dedicated herself uh, throughout like all the weekends, for example, and it was uh, quite challenging working from Monday to Friday. And then she needed it to travel about two hours. So she could take care of of, of my grandmom, right? Meanwhile, she was raising us, my sister and I. She, uh, she handled it very well, actually. I admire her because it, it required a little bit of, of time management, if not a lot, and a lot of patience because uh, she was able to put away a little bit of her social life, her personal life, while she was taking care of my grandmother. She also kept a lot of communication. That, uh, she kept a lot like uh, the communication going and flowing with an additional, with, with her sister and a professional caregiver. So when I say coordination and time management, it, it, I mean that when, when a family takes over or not, not necessarily takes over, right? Uh, take, assume the position to oversee all those services that the person received, that the senior received. It requires a lot of communication, a coordination, who is coming when, until what time the professional caregiver is the same with that senior, when the other person comes in, which is um, maybe called a chief, right? And what, what things are, are still missing, right? What things has to be continued to be done? So it's difficult to do it alone, right? Sometimes may, the neighbor, other, other siblings, cousins, family members, even from distance can help you out. Remember that many times people want to help and in some cases they don't, they don't just know what to do, right? They don't know how to help you out because they're not aware of the necessities that you go by through a daily basis. Be, be clear about your need and when you needed it, right? It's okay that people are able to help, but when do you need that help? If you already have a schedule, the professional caregiver to help you out, maybe their help is needed afterwards, right? Be open to accept the help. It's uh, uh, sometimes you have to be, uh, to give a little bit of, of, of control and, and be flexible with the help of others and be appreciative, right? Thank the person that is helping on behalf of yourself and the care recipient. Um, we did have a question come in and I put it in the chat. Uh, when you're not used to help and so many people keep asking you what they can do, what can you do? Um, how do you manage that? That can tend to be overwhelming. So how do you manage when everybody says they want to help and then that just adds more work to you? 
<laughs> first, of all, first of all, yes, it, it makes sense because it's like a, a, a lot of people is willing to help and be thankful for that. And, and, and one of the tips later on that we're gonna, we're gonna review is precisely to do a list of things that they can help with. So you can assign that path of responsibility. Like for example, I, I, it would be good if you can check on my, on my mom uh, at five, because that's when the professional caregiver finish her, her or his shift and i am supposed to get there from work so it will be like an hour transition and that will be helpful so sometimes uh, uh, they run out of milk or fresh produce so maybe that will be some kind of help or or just give the senior a call because sometimes if they're on the phone they're entertained i they don't and they don't feel lonely it's always good to to also try to take care of yourself. Uh, I personally take like 15 minutes meditation every morning. I reflect on my day. I, I give thanks for just being, just to breathe, right? Uh, the blessing of, of being awake every morning, it's, uh, it's a blessing for me it's a blessing and i'm talking about christina right christina as a as a human being uh i have always do the meditation i don't know how many years i have been doing it already uh maybe since 2000 since 2013 so it's been a quite a while and i have seen the change uh of managing difficult situations throughout the day I stay active that's something that i i i also practice right i i i do uh outdoors outdoors activities i do kayak i jog i walk and 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 i actually disconnect myself sometimes i read i listen to audiobooks um the public libraries here they have that uh that that service of audiobooks and you don't have to pay anything and you can do it while you're commuting and keep doing things that you enjoy find others with similar struggles like for example uh in today's presentation you are interacting with other people who are uh taking care of others other other family members or 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 patients. Focus on the positive, right? Uh, going back to the example of my mom taking care of my grandmom. She, uh, my mom, my grandmother passed away uh, years later uh, after my mom started taking care of her. But she's uh, very grateful that she was actually able to share time with her. Uh, and she reflects on that experience as of today, and she shares that experience with us, and even with my with my child, right? And and my and my niece, like uh, things that your grandmother, uh, she she usually says, ah, oh, your grandmother used to do that. Uh, we we have a recipe. It's called. In, in in Spanish, it's called sorullitos. It's like a corn meal recipe, fried fryer, right? And we have has we have been able to pass on that recipe. And now my niece and my my son uh, look forward to my mom to prepare the sorullitos. So that's something that she's very appreciative because she even. Uh, uh, got to enjoy it even more while she was taking care of my grandma. Find always that silver lining, right? And try to keep a sense of humor. Be grateful for the time that you have together and find activities you can do together. We With have my another dad, question. Um, is how do you handle it 
when the person that is being cared for only wants a specific person to care for them. And if somebody else comes in, they, you know, they won't accept them or it, it becomes difficult for them. Yes. They only want maybe, so and so. Maybe it, it will be good to consult that with a doctor, with the doctor, with the primary physician of the patient of the person who is asking to change that caregiver. It, to my knowledge, right? Um, sometimes when they when they have Alzheimer, when they have certain conditions, they they show different behaviors. So that's why it will be good to always always ask, ask to the primary physician. We never know uh, what is behind that statement. So uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't put away in the back burner that request. I will certainly observe it and discuss it with the doctor. Here, find the resources that you need. In most communities, there are services available to help caregivers. I, uh, as, the com as the community engagement executive, I have been reaching out to the area agency on aging, aging and I have been touching base with the, with the parks and recreations department. They all have senior activity, acti I'm sorry, they all have activities for seniors. Now it's mostly virtually, but they're starting to do things in person. Uh, uh, I know that um, there are certain uh, services such as Meals on Wheels that help out uh, delivering pre-cooked meals. Uh, we have other adult daycare facilities throughout the county and respite care, support groups for caregivers as well. I can share with you uh, some links. I can, uh, Cindy, how can I, how can I share the links that I have available for, for them either through go, Facebook go ahead and go ahead and Go ahead and put them in the chat box and mm -hmm. I will copy and paste into the, uh, the uh, comments in okay. the uh, live stream. Okay. Perfect then. So uh, meanwhile, if someone would like to comment or, or share with us the takeaways of this, uh, of this presentation, it will be good. Let me go ahead and stop sharing so I can give you that. The um, links we, have, for the we, we do have a question here about insurance. So what kind of insurance pays for this uh, type of service? Is it the regular Humana, Medicaid, managed long-term care, Medicare, uh, what did? So basically uh, there are certain types of, of the, according to the plan, right? The specific of those, uh, of those benefits, I, I can refer an agent to talk about those. Uh, you can share my email information. I'm mm -hmm. going to go ahead and put it in the chat box as well. Okay, what about so transportation? Does yes. Humana provide transportation? Yes, some of the okay. health, the health plans in, indeed include transportation. And, and the Disney plan includes other types of services, which is um, there is a plan that the people who receive Medicaid and Medicare, uh, they qualify for. So those type of, of that type of information, I should be able to put them in contact with an agent so they can explain them better. Let me Excellent. go ahead and my email is C. Martinez 83 at Humana. And I will be posting these uh, in the live stream links so you don't have to try and remember it really quick. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
care uh, help guide was one of the resources that we referred to. Hi, sorry. This is the link. The other resources that the other resource that we referred to was the Humana Caregiver Toolkit. That toolkit, toolkit is very good. It actually it's a workbook where you can write down the contact information, medications, um, activities, uh, the to-do list. It helps a lot. And those links I am now putting in. And the third one is caregiving in the US. US. I'm going to go ahead and post it over here. I would like um, to see the opportunity to let you know that we are going to have two other seminars related to caregiving. Um, another question. Um, does Humana pay for uh, like updates to your home, like the grab bars or any other assisted devices, like grab bars for your bathroom so you don't fall? Um, or any other assisted devices that are necessary exactly. in the home to prevent from, you know, injury. Again, that will be a uh, benefit specific, benefit specific, and an agent will be able to go through that. So if the person can can either email me or 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 provide us with the information in like a inbox that is not public, we can reach out to them. That would be good as well. So I can refer that question and the contact information and the agent call back. Okay, all those links are now in uh, Facebook. Any other questions? I don't see any other questions at the moment. So that being said, so I don't know. So I, I did to... see another question that popped in. So one of the questions is um, about so, uh, good sources for uh, meditation resources. And the, the person asked, does JCS have meditation? So yes, we, we actually do have meditation and it's available through our um, Lambda Living Calendar online. Which I will also put that link into the uh, chat box. And the, the other two segments in this caregiver series are also on that calendar. So, um, you know, you can put them in your calendar right now so you don't miss them. <laughs> <laughs> All your friends can join us for the next two as well. So that being said, I guess that we... That, that was a lot of information um it really was and you know we got some good questions so hopefully uh and it you know christina's email is in there so if you have any other questions that come up uh after this christina is it okay for people to shoot you an email and say hey yeah. i was on this webinar and i want to ask this question okay yeah, so there you have it folks <laughs> yeah excellent <laughs> So thank you. I appreciate your attendance, everyone's attendance here today. I hope that you have a wonderful rest of the day.
And on behalf of Jewish Community Service, Donna Herzog and myself, and our Lambda Living Online program, Christina, thank you so much for this wealth of information. We have recorded this session, so uh, it will be available to watch at a later date. So if your friends missed it, you can just tell them to uh, check out the recording section in our Lambda Living Online uh, program. So thank you, and we will see you next month on the... July 21st. July 21st. Thank you so much, Christina, and we look forward to seeing you again on July 21st. Bye. Have a great day, everyone, and see you next time.